Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to the workbench. It's as clean as it's been in a couple days. I had a couple videos in the can, so I kind of spaced them out, you know, in the build series. And uh, then I got to working on the next ones, and it was like the floor. I'm, I'm not going to show anybody the floor because it's bad. When I start cutting out decals, they just go everywhere. So this is indeed the final installment of this particular volume of It Came From The Workbench, the building of the Phoenix straight axle. Uh, you've seen him, if you watch the weekly update, you've gotten to see him ghost ride and get some scratches on his unpainted body. That body is now painted. I call it one of my typical six foot paint jobs. I use two different widths. That's right, two different widths of masking tape, a three color paint job, and as per usual, when I attempt an inside the Lexan uh, body, I think the last inside the Lexan job I did was Yella's uh, Gozer, and it was fine. It, it's it's fine. So this one, I went with more of a scheme. I took some inspiration for it. But before we get to that, a cautionary tale. Uh, I'm a big fan of my MIP driver tips and manual drivers, both. So there's, there's part of it, and uh, there's the other part of it. And uh, let me, so, so what do I have to use now? Uh, this is the, there it is, there it is. There's a big pile. Uh, I'm now punishing myself by using this terrible Amazon sourced piece of crap because I needed a 1.5 millimeter as I turned this one into fragments. If you look very closely, uh, you'll be able to see that the tip is actually gone. So it, it shattered the tip off as well. There's just the, the little hint of where the tip used to be. How would I do that, you might ask? Well, I was changing out the servo horn and uh, I said, oh, I forgot to put in the clamping screws. So like a lazy idiot, I had the thing powered up and I just grabbed the radio and put the radio like this, rigs upside down. I get the driver in there and I have the steering wheel turned so that I can access the screw. I get it tightened down and then without even thinking about it, I let go of the steering wheel. And uh, there's plenty of torque. To turn. It, it even made that little nice piano wire boing, as it flew apart. So, uh, I mean, you, you want to talk about Amazon economy. So uh, this is a whole set. I think it goes 1.5 millimeter to 8 millimeter. I don't e need most of them. Uh, this is this is what was available. Like, like look at these. Uh, I, although I do, the 4 and the 5 are nice because some of the wheel nut things, like the, um, the G-Mate adapters. So, you know, they'll get used. But you really realize how good these are after using these for a little while. So don't be like me. It is nice to have these as a backup set. I thought I had a backup 1.5, but I could only find a two and a 2.5. So I can't even bring myself to throw it away. I did it, 100% my fault. Does not reflect the tool at all. Anyway, on to the vehicle. As I mentioned, I took some inspiration. I didn't, I made no effort to copy it because I'm not good at that kind of thing. But I did indeed take some inspiration from the Toyota, the non-TRD, but Team Gazoo Racing. They use a black, white, red scheme, pretty much like TRD. I don't understand. I honestly, I don't know the difference between TRD and Team and, and TGR. But I, I took some at least small inspiration from the colors and the scheme employed by TGR. And there he is. The big mask, the Kamoi tape, the Tamiya masking tape, was what I use for everything that's red. So let's just cut to the edit and put them on the toilet. I, by the way, uh, I know I mentioned it before, but I absolutely love this thing. I, uh, I did indeed, I drilled that hole out from six millimeter to a, I think it was a letter C bit. And now it's like, it's perfect. I can get it to go where I want it to go. Spins around, went with a little, so the narrower tape that I used is just some old scotch three quarter masking tape because I wanted to get that, that double line. And you can see 
the bleed spots. Like I put it on as carefully as I could and I burnished it. And then some of the marks, which you might be able to see are on the outside. If we get a little close up there, uh, it's tough to see. I can see it much better in person. But uh, when I rolled it, when it had its mask on, some of the scratches came all the way through. So there's some back here as well, like down here. That's where when I painted the outside fenders, it just came through. I mean, that's that's a thing that happens when, when you try to work too quickly. From six feet, I think it looks pretty good. The Velcro on the sides worked perfectly. Still using the magnets. Absolutely rock solid. It still has so much forward weight bias that it's ridiculous. I really love the look of it. And some Gorilla Tape was recently employed. A what? There we go. We spin it around. Look at that. Oh yes. Also, uh, back, back window cut out. The, the mounting of the front and rear grills to me, it gives you, I mean, that Traxxas gives you everything you need. There's these cool masks that go through and they show you where to cut out. The same for, I didn't even know the snorkel came with mirrors. So it's got mirrors and a snorkel. The body really, the body really takes off when you put the accessories on it. So uh, I believe the 8112 is about 45 bucks and it was like 28 bucks for all the little pieces that go with it and especially the front and rear like you could probably get away without the snorkel but I would buy the kit with the snorkel just to get the mirrors because the mirrors really make it I thought about putting the Traxxas masks for the trims on the windows and then I was like they're just gonna get all ripped to shreds so I'm not gonna do that the wiring of the lights was not too bad let's so then you just pop and then you can't actually just pull and it, and it unwires. There's a Gorilla Tape holding it down. Pretty simple. We've got, you'll note, I, I really either need to source a, a triple adapter or manufacture one myself because I have one wire going to the front. Oh, we can shut the lights off now. Uh, one is for the lights on the body because those need to detach. And I have one more, but I don't know if I want to solder everything together. What we have dropped off by Amazon about five minutes before I started filming this. Yep. Nope, that's not right. No, that is right. Uh, some rock lights. And they are, they're acceptably bright. I figure if this guy's gonna have headlights and taillights, he's gotta have rock lights. And when I was looking at it, I was like, I'm just gonna mount these like right at the top of the tower. If I can just figure out how to do it, I think it's a perfect, I mean, if it, if it lights up in here, let's, uh, let's, let's go dark for a second. This building does indeed have, well, there's some windows in the doors in the front, but. I think if I can get these oriented kind of right, right about like that, that, that should, that should be plenty. You actually, you kind of want the light to hit on the inside of the wheel. So it came with little brackets to facilitate this mounting. So while, while we're here in the, in the, in the finale of this series, if it came from the workbench, this is going to, this is going to dovetail into the next thing. Uh, there won't be any wheeling direct wheeling in this video for that you'll want to tune into the one that comes after this one as someone in the comments asked about the Hobbywing Fusion Pro so then the the wheeling of this is going to take place immediately after this I might just put them up at the same time like upload the same day we'll see how that we'll see how it goes and it will be a rundown with the Fusion Pro, it will be my sort of quick review on the Fusion Pro now that we have a rig all sorted out for it. But in, as we're gonna close, as we're, as, we're, as we're coming to the end, not the end, but 
But that transition, he's moving to the next stage of life in which he goes out and like the underside of this will never look so good again. Just from his little, he's got a little, some couple little scratches there, but uh, he'll be as scarred up as all the rest. And I think worthy of note, let us, before I get to putting these lights on, I had a, I had a, a, a spark of inspiration. The light bulb alighted, no pun intended, uh, as to how to mount them. So I've already modi- I've pre-modified the brackets. But before we get to the attachment of that bracketry, I think it is important at this state. So we've got a Phoenix and we've got a Phoenix. The difference is this one has straight axles. This one has portals. This was actually the one that broke the, that I broke the MIP on. Because this guy, I mean, that servo probably has enough. It, it's a claimed 50 kg. This one is a 4S Direct 66 kg, and uh, it obviously does have enough power to snap it. So, there have been some changes under the hood on good old Argentum. You will notice a conspicuous lack of a battery tray. You will also note the battery has been moved to the forward position, much like this gentleman. The linkages have been Lunsforded, much like this gentleman. The entire gearbox got pulled apart. I pulled every gear out, and uh, I did. I had forgotten, and I, I think I mentioned when I was building the, uh, the gearbox for this guy. I couldn't remember what grease... I had used during the assembly of this gearbox, and it was the Vanquish Blue Grease, and it was almost dry. Uh, I, if I rubbed across the teeth of the gears, I could get a little black off of it. That, that grease was pretty much gone. So during the teardown and reassembly, when I reassembled the VFD Twin in here, I changed nothing. I took the gears out, I wiped them down. I liberally gobbed them with Lucas Red and Tacky, and I put it back together. As someone had mentioned, he sounds terrible. The click is completely gone. I changed nothing. All the spacers were where they were supposed to be. I didn't, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything except the motor, the, the gearbox equivalent of turning it off and turning it back on again. I took all the parts out, wiped them off, re-greased them, put them back in, dead silent. Because I was noticing there's no reason this guy should be so noisy when it's the exact same. The difference here is, oh, this will come up later. In a future installment. So here we have side by side Phoenix Portal. Now that noise is the weirdness that you get from a castle slate. The low speed control is there, but it's not quiet. You know, this one works better if you turn it on. All you hear is gear. If that's not a selling point for the Fusion Pro, I don't know what is. Do a little, do a little full blast. There's a certain point in the band where the RPM, the uh, where the gear noise overloads the motor noise. Right about there. It's very, it's very smooth. I'm not saying anything overtly negative about that castle setup, but... It's all gear noise. That's all you hear in this one. The Fusion apparently...
doesn't make any noise. So there you have it. This guy is now just like this guy. This guy's got some other little additions that I'll go over. Oh, but I did the same thing. Drilled through and put flatheads all in there and then had to build a plate to fit everything on the side because those two little little nubbins. It's a problem this guy doesn't have because I, I, I could put the, the receiver box in between the little nubbins. But they are very they are very much more similar now. The only difference is being power train well, electronics. Uh, these guys are the same, but this guy's got a big monster, the biggest AGFRC, the copperhead. We're gonna see if this guy keeps that powertrain going into the future because I am nothing but impressed with that, the ability to do that. If you weren't looking at it, you wouldn't know it was moving. And added bonus, it doesn't go beep every 10 seconds because you left it on. That. So, Old Phoenix, un, as of yet, unwheeled. Uh, I, I made all the changes and put him back on his shelf, which is where he's going right now, because he is still outfitted for the six line once I ever get around to actually doing it. So before this guy comes to a close, I think, I think, let's not, oh, new plugs. Let's see if the idea that I had to attach these lights actually works. The idea that I've had for attachment, as it involves the least amount of extra stuff, and should frustrate me only to a minimal degree. Where did I set the bracket down? What's up uh, right there? Is take the upper shock mounting screw out. The the guy, the guy, he came with like a two millimeter hole. So I just I figured there's enough meat. It's holding on a tiny light. Drilled it out to three millimeter. As uh when I was looking this guy over. I noticed that when you tighten this bolt down, there's there's a couple millimeters of thread hanging out in the front. So I was like, eh, I should be able to put that on there. Then what we will do, I think if I thought ahead enough, this should only be moderately, modestly inconvenient. Hey, it fits. Uh, this should be, oh, and, and I had another, the, the, the other possibility, had it not cleared this way, I would have just gotten a much longer one and just attached it down with a nut from the other side. That's, that's also an option. I kind of, like, if this turns out to be too much of a hassle, the way it's attached right here, because as you see, the light covers the line for that. I'm hoping that I can get these, because you have to put a nut on it. I'm hoping I can tighten it down enough to where these can still move a little bit. That way I can swing it out of the way when the shock has to come off. Otherwise, what I'll probably do is just drill straight through the tower so, and then use a through bolt with a nut on the other side. That's, that's option B. But hopefully, option A remains valid. Let's... Slap the other one on while we're at it. I have come to the, you know, the, it's not a conclusion. It's just an outright acceptance. I am as right-handed as you can get, I think. My left hand holds doors open and lifts heavy objects. When I have to put in a screw or operate in any capacity where my left hand is the hand doing the work, I'm, I'm useless. Okay, there are a couple different lengths of screws in here. It uh, They came with a whole bunch of stuff. Like they got little lenses over them with these. Look at, look at the size of these boys. So those will all get put in eventually. The wiring on this looks like it's just long enough. He's going to be a messy nest of wiring. Uh, thinking back 
to the Scale Builders Guild build of when he did his, uh, when he used this body. Oh, that's really close. When he used that body on his sport build, uh, he used some Tamiya interior for it, like a touring car interior. I think an interior will really... I might try a couple Amazon options if there's stuff that's re relatively inexpensive, you know, in the affordable range. Because then I can hide all of these wires and it won't, uh, it won't prey on my sanity. For now, we're going to get the lights... <laughs> A fix. I'm genuinely surprised with myself that I managed to get the the lighting on the body as cleanly as I did. As I've mentioned, uh, I've only put I had lights in one, I think one rig. When I first built up my Defender, I was like, "Oh man, I gotta have some lights on this thing. Super scale. It's gonna look neat." Uh, Having to unplug the body every time, particularly as I went with the Traxxas lighting option, where the connectors don't go together remarkably well, uh, it runs on that special Traxxas lighting power adapter. It might work better on non-defenders, but with the Defender, every time you take the body off, multiple things unplug. Sometimes it would unplug when it was driving. I constantly had to bend the pins. This one is just a servo plug into a servo plug. So I feel like I'm not gonna have as big of a hassle with it. And most of the lights, there's only one plug going to the body. Most of the lights are attached to the rig itself. I think what I would want, what I will want to do is run this inside the body post that way I can use less zip ties. I figure the forward position is probably better looking at how the body sat. It's actually going together far more quickly than I would have anticipated. Okay, now that these are in place, this is really what I wanted to get. I think that guy's aiming up a little too much. We'll see, this is some stuff that'll have to be fine tuned and if, if I do say so myself, once some of this stuff is kind of zip-tied here into the middle, I thought the wiring situation was going to be way worse. Like, I, I, I like it clean, and when you have this many servos and stuff, uh, you're never going to get... You're never going to get super-duper clean. I could have picked a little bit longer of an extension. I, I did... That's the only soldering I've done on this so far. Literally, everything else was ready to go. Not bad. Battery still plugged in? No. Oh, it's times like this. I'm doubly thankful for the magnets. Yeah, the the that's the one the one uh, odd behavior of the Fusion Pro. The startup tones. Sometimes when it powers up, it's like a really boop, 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 a really low, and then sometimes it's like burp, burp, burp. So, I don't know. Hey, what? Oh, that's nice. Uh, you know what? Uh, yeah. Uh, if the camera is looking at it correctly. Okay, see? See how that light casts right there? I got the rears, like, perfect. Because that's really where you want the light to hit is on the inside. I've got this one. The one that I thought was up too high is indeed too high. It's shining too much on the top of the tire. I want more light right here because that's what I'm trying to look at when I'm driving in the dark. And as nothing else, let's get it full dark. Uh, when, when you're driving in the dark, being able to see what the inside and outside of the wheels are doing seems to be the most important part. I think it's, I think it's great. Uh, I am going to look into, I'm assuming you can get origin fenders, internal fenders. See what those look like, because rock lights do indeed do a lot better with a fender. So that, that's, that's, that's in the future. But look at, 
so good it's so good i could not be happier with how the phoenix straight axle came out i'm so glad that functioned fun, uh, featured there prominently that hobby wing came out with that pro and i'm proud of myself for uh venturing to buy one because i think it's the perfect it's the perfect power plant for this thing as far as i'm concerned I'll, I'll go so far as to say, if you're going to build a Phoenix, buy a Fusion Pro. Let's see how this will adjust. Hey, auto auto disconnect. Let me turn off the rest. So I'm going to put the, the, the little nuts that have to hold these in place, because otherwise the first time I drive it, they're all going to fall off. Uh, throw some zip ties on there so that no like w uh, wires fall into a servo linkage or anything. And then I am going to set straight to doing the the video on the Fusion Pro. So if you're at all interested in the stuff on the Fusion Pro, uh, the way I have this guy's switch mounted right there, it's super easy even with the body on to just plug the card in make some changes and I'll go over all that stuff. So I'll get these locked down. And this guy does indeed thank you for tuning in to see his, his process and his progress. And now he joins the rest of the crew. He's gonna go out and do some competitions against some other guys. Uh, we'll have him, he'll go in with the straight axle group so he'll he'll probably do some competitions up against you know ground fox origin jake the the uh uh yella misdirection the, the 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 straight axle group straight axles i think i think in the fleet straight axles might have passed port we started off all portals and i think we're moving into a uh, we're moving into the straight axle phase now uh i did i have not i still haven't thrown them on a scale yet if anyone is at all curious about where this guy came out, uh, just let me know in the comments and I will, I will do a quick scaling and see if I can find the address to that, uh, that chassis calculator. I should, you know, I should bookmark that thing. So there he is. He's he'll, he'll get a name. He'll, he'll get a name. I wanted a better name for the purple one, but ground Fox origin GFO is just kind of where he is kind of what's stuck. And uh, this this bumper fits pretty well on on the Phoenix, and it is heavy. So I mean, his his front bias, it's crazy forward. It's like right there is where his tipping point is, which is why I think he's got so much bite in the front. So he's got a little bit of cleaning up to do, some screws to tighten up, some things to snug down, and then we're going to go directly into uh, the quick review on the Fusion. So if you're interested in that, look forward to it. Be up. that Whatever day this one is live, it'll be up the day after that. So if you're looking for it in the future, just look at the date this one came out. Look for the video the day after that. Thanks for watching this one, everybody. We are, we are so happy to have you along with us. I've enjoyed the build process of the Phoenix immensely. And it, oh, by the way, just, just side note. This guy, it, it's like working on a real vehicle almost because to get this guy out it, there's a whole bin of screws everything's got to come out then that whole thing has to come apart and i spent an hour it was about an hour and a half right about 90 minutes to get that gearbox out cleaned put back in i i wish it had worked the first time you know that would have been great but that click and then i took it apart and put it back together and it still clicked the I guess fourth time was a charm and just absolutely dousing it with Lucas written tacky. So now I'm worried because if memory serves, I built this guy with the blue stuff and it's going to wear off in fairly short order. And then I'll have another hour and a half of pulling that guy apart to put red and tacky in him. So fingers crossed that that doesn't turn out to be the case. Once again, we thank you for watching for the final time in this episode. I promise 
we ask, we encourage you to comment below. We, meaning us, these these two these two entities. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Watch some other videos. Do whatever you want to do, man. You are all the masters of your own destiny. And uh, in that mastering of the destiny, please do be sure to make every effort possible. Have a good one, everybody.